The COVID-19 pandemic brought many industries around the world to a dramatic halt, including Hollywood. Since March, film production has been suspended as shelter-in-place orders went into effect, leaving many in the industry out of work. And while California has given the go-ahead for production to resume as of June 12, it's unclear when film and TV production will return to full capacity. I think there's probably a world where some version of production maybe starts happening as early as August, but it'll be at the pace of everyone feeling like they've all dotted their I's and crossed their T's in terms of the safety. However, technology developed for the video game industry could play a role in getting Hollywood back to work. When we were doing Jungle Book and Lion King, all the executives came in and all of a sudden you could see their eyes light up and they all saw the potential of it. It is the digital equivalent of making a movie with digital tools as opposed to real tools. Virtual production, which was integral in creating the first Star Wars TV show, The Mandalorian, and Disney's remake of The Lion King, even allowed some filmmakers to continue working while everyone was at home. We're speeding what I would have normally guessed was going to take about four years of interest to do um, into about, you know, four months. It is obviously the way we're going to make movies in the distant future. What's happening now is that that timeline is being accelerated because the benefits that it was going to give us 10 years from now can actually come into play less than a year from now. I think that in the, uh, in the very near future, this will become a standard way of, of movie making. The idea of virtual production is that you start to mimic the live action filmmaking process while you're creating what would traditionally be considered a virtual film. Virtual production is a series of tools that make it easier for filmmakers to do things like experiment with camera angles, construct film sets, and even location scout in a virtual world. Directors can use a VR headset to really immerse themselves in a scene. We would build our sets uploaded into VR and we would scout around right. in VR and have this iterative process where we'd go to the location just like you would on a live action shoot and discuss camera angles, pick lenses, and we would shoot it as though we were, you know, we'd stand there looking at the lions. Virtual production isn't necessarily any one approach to solving this problem. It's the idea that computer graphics tools can be used to benefit the film process. These tools can benefit many stages of production, like improving the pre-production planning of pre-visualization and storyboarding, but also physical production, and especially projects with a great deal of visual effects. As computer-generated imagery came on board, what happened is kind of the center of creative gravity shifted from being on set into post-production. It brings post back into production is really what it does, and you're no longer in sort of like a game of telephone to figure out what the intent was on the day versus you know what they're doing in the editing bay. The more the two teams come together and embrace the idea, the more amazing things that we can pull off. And it shows in a TV show like Mandalorian where they could do such amazing imagery without having to build massive sets everywhere and without having to travel around the world to get to this desert or that jungle or that forest. It allows them to create a movie that feels like it has a huge scope to it, but was actually shot on a soundstage. For pre-production planning, the team can collaborate on virtual film sets, experimenting with different camera perspectives and lighting setups. The advantage is it provides a sandbox-like environment to try things out before entering production where things are more costly. You create essentially your own pre -vis, and we do this on The Mandalorian in pre-production. So we get to make the movie essentially in VR, send those dailies to the editor, and we have a cut of the film that serves the purpose that Previs would have. And you can see if something's working or not right away, and if it's not working, you can experiment effortlessly to get it to work. And that's something that, you know, hasn't been possible before. If I come to the stage knowing exactly what I want, because I vetted all the other ways of doing it, because I went through my five bad ones before I came up with a good one, I could shoot it very quickly because I know all the ins and outs of it. It's creatively efficient as well as it's ultimately much cheaper to produce. And it is now evolving into a whole suite of different tools thanks to developments inside of real-time game engine technology. Virtual production relies on game engines created by companies like Epic Games and Unity. Epic Games not only publishes its own games, 
like Fortnite, but it also has the Unreal Engine, which is the game engine, which is essentially the software that is underlining Fortnite and actually many other games that other people make. It allows you to not only have visuals and render that in real time, but also there are physics in there. There's also very naturalistic lighting that happens. There are all these things that happen in the real world that you get in a game engine. So that is really relevant because when we start to talk about visualization, that's really the power of a game engine. Game engines have started to reach the fidelity needed for film. I think we've been used in over 120 films uh, since 2016. And, and right now, actually, that is picking up drastically. Game engines were developing very, very fast to satisfy the demands for the market space that was, that was very visually acute, but not really necessary for what we were doing in broadcasting and in, in film. Epic kind of changed that whole script, actually, and, and brought all that to the forefront and became viable. The engine is advancing so fast and the, the images that it's able to create, they're extremely photorealistic and you can kind of do anything you want to do. We're working closely with companies like Unreal where we are utilizing game technology, real-time pre-visualization tools on set uh, that helps really give you a, a sense of what your movie is gonna look like dynamically in real time. Some projects have paired real-time rendering with LED walls and projectors, replacing what traditionally would have been a green screen. The cost of LED continues to go down. The resolution, like per tile, see, keeps going up, so things get higher and higher detail. And at some point, we kind of hit this crossover where we really could see LED on camera in a way where you didn't know it was an LED wall. A lot of projects are using light panel walls right now. Uh, just because it's a great way to create a interesting background without having to build large sets or travel to distant places. Some of the earlier versions of this tech were used on Oblivion and Solo, a Star Wars story. During Oblivion, that used it like a 400 foot projection surface to kind of be outside the set. LED panels have also frequently been used to film vehicles. Most recently, we actually did a bunch of car work for The Irishman for Netflix car sitting on a stage, surrounded by LED screen, and then uh, you would have driving plates playback on all those different screens while you were shooting. Combining digital environments with physical sets helps immerse the actors in the scenes and allows the crew to capture photorealistic sequences in camera. When you walk into one of these volumes, it's absolutely immersive. And the, the emotion that you get as, a, as an actor, you can feed off of what you're seeing in the set. Now you could create a scene in the computer, put it up on a video wall, and then photograph it with a live action camera, and the wall responds to it. If I tilt the camera and pick it up, the background does the same. So all of a sudden now you, you're in really a virtual world with a real person, and it looks photorealistic in camera. Disney's The Mandalorian took this combination to another level, creating an LED volume on a Los Angeles soundstage that allowed the team to shoot in environments created in Unreal Engine. Magic hour, you know, when the sunset goes down, that lasts maybe for 10, 15 minutes. When I'm on one of these stages, it can last for 28, 48 hours. It can, it can last as long as I want. I had people come by the set from the studio who said, I thought you weren't building this whole set here. And I said, no, all that's there is the desk. <laughs> you can stand in some positions on that set and you can fool yourself even though you built the thing. More than half of the show was shot on virtual sets. The rest was done using real set pieces and practical effects. Under the supervision of Kim Library, really pushed the Unreal Engine so that you could have controllable lighting and so that you could have things from the perspective of the camera looking photorealistic. John Favreau, the showrunner for The Mandalorian, had worked with virtual production technology on his previous two films, The Jungle Book and the recent The Lion King remake. They had this entire environment where Favreau could look through the lens and see the animations and see the set and see everything and then marionette it. It's like imagination straight to screen. Disney television animation recently worked with the Unity team on one of its shows. One of the first big projects we did was with Disney television animation called Baymax Dreams. The idea was to see if we could make episodic animation faster and better using 
a real-time engine. So we're working with Simon J. Smith, who did Ants and uh, B-Movie and Shrek, and he's done a lot of CG. And he was saying things like, I I'd never do it the old way again. You know, I can, I am so close to my characters with these tools. Aside from providing a better creative experience for the filmmakers, it also proved to be a more cost-effective endeavor. Disney television animation saw 40% savings. So the artists and the creatives get pretty jazzed about this stuff, but the producers get pretty jazzed too. And for live action shoots, incorporating LED volumes such as those used on The Mandalorian could help crews move faster and more efficiently. A lot of times you might build a set for one day. It'll take two or three weeks to build it, paint it, dress it, you know, get it ready to, to shoot. There's a tremendous amount of waste and cost that's involved you could do the same thing and it's very live action oriented and it looks photo real in camera. It's like, why would I go back to the other way unless there is a compelling reason to? So far, the concept of virtual production is relatively new, but adoption of the tech is growing. We've used virtual production on a number of projects. Planet of the Apes, New Lines, Rampage, Avengers, Endgame. We also used a number of sort of pre elements for the upcoming Amazon Lord of the Rings series. I'm really looking forward to delivering the next series of Avatar sequels where we can talk more openly about where we've really pushed into some higher end tool sets for, for virtual production. And adoption accelerated as the pandemic shut down production around the world. Everybody, of course, now because of COVID is really interested in still in being able to work collaboratively like we used to, but be, you know, have uh, observed social distancing. Now that we've entered into this, people are starting to think, oh, wait a minute, maybe I can leverage this in order to not only be more effective and efficient in how I'm, I'm operating, but that I could have distributed workforce as I'm preparing for a film Virtual production enables some shows to move forward with production even during shelter-in-place orders. And we're seeing lots of projects get started where people are uh, blocking out the show, doing virtual set scouting, and doing as much work as they can with these tools while they're from home. We uh, had, you know, five people in a video game. The director's in Miami, where technically oriented people are in their homes, and I'm in my basement, and we're all in the game together, and I'm previewing for the director the shots that he is suggesting we should get for this particular uh, pre-visualization scene that we're doing, and then I could shoot it really fast and get really quick feedback. Another advantage is it can be used to help with location scouting. We've got some partners, Digital Film Tree, and they're using our tools and they're doing uh, scouting and pre for a number of Netflix shows, and that's all moving forward. We fly in just for the tech scout. And so all the amount of money and effort and hotel rooms and things just for to impart this information, you could do it more efficiently and study it more, because then you could be in there by yourself if you want to. We can hire a local person to go and LIDAR it and photograph it, and then we recreate it and set it up in a virtual environment and give it to the producers wherever they are in the world so that nobody has to travel further than you know, uh, you know 50 miles or so. This tool is providing opportunities really across the board for all of the different departments to come together. And, and I think it's, it's, that's going to be a necessity as we move into the new normal. As productions begin to start back up, film shoots will face new obstacles to keep cast and crew safe. We're uh, dealing with the, the very real challenge of uh, border closures, the inability to sort of move people from location to location to location. And that has been a, a cornerstone of movie making. It's not just restrictions on travel, it's also social distancing guidelines. It's how do we create the content that we all want to create, but be responsible in doing so. Instead of sending an uh, entire cast and crew and everybody to like Tunisia, they'll be able to send a very small crew there that will be able to go and capture um, the environment and bring that back to a soundstage. Or in some cases, they'll just be able to do their research online and have someone create that. Some unions and organizations have begun outlining safety guidelines for how sets can operate. Tyler Perry Studios in Atlanta is planning to begin production again in early July. In New Zealand, the Avatar cast and crew recently returned to resume production on the sequels. They spent two weeks in quarantine upon arrival. Virtual production can help out. Um, 
You don't have to go to Africa to get a beautiful savanna anymore. We can create that in the computer, whether we put it up onto a light panel during a shoot on a live action stage, or we do it as a post-production process, or we go fully virtual production and we capture the entire movie in the computer. It will become a, a valuable and viable way of making a movie. And I predict that every studio will have one or two or three uh, virtual uh, stages. I was telling a, a, a friend, Steve Williams, who did uh, Jurassic Park, the CG dinosaurs, and I said that this new technology reminded me very much of the day that I walked in when he and the team had just finished the first test of a T-Rex walking across the grass. And what you knew in that moment was the industry was going to change. Fast forward to last year and walking onto the set of The Mandalorian, I had the same feeling. When you look out there and you see what this is and the fact that this is just the beginning and we're just scratching the surface of what it is, I, there was no question, things are going to change.